Hello YouTube, Infinite Magic Break community, Gandalf here. So first off, with maybe a little bit of announcement, um, I have now officially obtained the content creator status. So I'm very happy about that. Um, thanks to everyone's help. Uh, finally got there after just, you know, about a month. Um, one current topic that I know a lot of people are discussing right now uh, and thinking about is the and the first anniversary event um, the game developers have rolled out a really juicy set of rewards all the con different content creators already covered it I'm not gonna ramble on I think the one that everyone's looking forward to is the 5,000 gem chest for either choosing a Santa or a Pauline a panda or a little Jack from there now now, if you're a whale, you probably have, you know, exclusive three on all three of them. So, you know, if you have all of them at E5, then, you know, there you go. Another 100 points to your in car in, in your sanctuary. But, you know, for others, um, probably it's a tough decision, especially if you don't have any of them at exclusive three yet. So hopefully today's video, I'll help you talk about the pros and cons about, about, um, each of these heroes and you know what you could potentially choose from um I'll, I'll do a little bit of a you know tldr for those who are just hoping for a quick answer so i would just say if you're pvp focused and if you don't have any of these i would actually suggest you picking paul in first um even a paul in e0 it allows you start to build a, a second turn team and to be able to counter the most annoying um, CCs out there. So Paulin shuts out Nazelle comps. So if you're starting to build out your threes comp, getting up Paulin is huge uh, for your teams. Um, and getting the E1, E1 really helps you with dealing with any sort of CC based team. So Paulin shuts out all CC based meta teams and it will really help you advance in your PVP progression uh, especially when you're on a relatively newer server. Now, having said that, uh, many players I know out there are also more PvE focused, and in PvE, um, you know, farming up your dungeons is super important. Now, I would say Santa is probably your your go-to pick for for early on. But to be fair, right? Let's you know, putting everything aside. You know, do you really need Santa? And I think in some of my videos I've shown that, you know, you don't really need Santa to push certain level of content. Um, I would actually say Santa makes things easier. It doesn't necessarily is absolutely mandatory. Um, for example, I think even in, you know, at the end of the, you know, near end game, I mean, the top meta teams don't even have Santas in there, potentially, right? Because you can you you're running Lydia with Nordak and Marvel, uh, for example, as your standard defensive side of things, and then you have two DPS for high end gameplay. Um, Santa is a really good option if you don't want to build out Nordak. If you have Nordak, Nordak plus Catherine, for the most part, can do what Santa does on a team. Santa doesn't have that great of a heal, has an okay shield, um, at exclusive zero, it does a freeze and AoE slow down. Yes, it does a lot of things, but it doesn't mean you absolutely need it. So if you have a Catherine and if you have um, a Nordak, I would say if you can get to exclusive one Jack, that would actually help you push harder content than, than Santa. And I know a lot of people disag might disagree with that one and always suggest, oh, you should always pick out, you know, your Santa first. And, you know, they, they have their, their valid points. I mean, I mean, we can look at some, some, uh, I mean, I'm farming Marius 34 right now. Um, I mean, let's talk about what do some of these roll. I think it's a good interest. I mean, let's, uh, sorry, back to battle scene. Um, if we think about this particular team, right, it's, 
you have your Santa and your Nordak. I mean, the role they fulfill. Nordak is really the one that's doing the the, the tanking and surviving here, right? Um, Santa is just very well-rounded. I mean, if I didn't have Santa in here, if I do with Catherine, can I pull it off? Yeah, I probably can. I mean, I do have the speed up from a MOOC, right? What's really going to help you reduce the boss damage is actually Jack and a hero that can do defense down, uh, sorry, that can do attack down. A lot of people ask the question of, you know, um, what is the point of, you know, Jack, another 40%. I th if you haven't checked out my video on how the damage formula works, you really should, because that will explain why and how massive a the additional 40% um, attack down is. Okay, to put things into perspective, okay, if the boss is hitting you, say, 100,000, with 40% attack down, the boss is likely going to hit you only 50,000 or less. Okay, it's more than just whatever, you know, that 40% reduction is when you're doing attack. This is because of the way how the damage reduction formula works in the game. It's... It's basically the attack of the boss divided by the boss's attack plus your defense. So the more you can reduce it, uh, reduce the attack, the, the less damage is going to go through that way. Um, so so um, now if you, um, the dam sorry, the damage reduction is just, you know, defense divided by the, the boss's attack plus your defense. So the smaller you can make that attack, the great, the bigger the magnitude there. So when you do going from a 40% to an 80%, that's like the boss hitting you from 50K, not hitting you 20K, but more like hitting you only 10K. So an 80% attack down will, will reduce the boss's damage by more than tenfold. Okay, that is huge to your survivability. So before you will probably die very quickly at Marius 34. Now, you know, the boss, you know, barely tickles you. Okay. Um, so from a survivability standpoint, like this is going to be able to help you push much harder content than um, stuff you couldn't push before. Um, so, I mean, on my other accounts, you can see that it's using... Um, it only has a Santa E1, and for the longest time, I was running Santa E0. And Santa E0 is great, right? It allows you to go for that freeze, gives you a little bit of shield. It works really well with Catherine. Uh, at E1, you get the 40% speed up, which is, you know, very useful utility-wise. Um, but in the grand scheme of things, it, is it going to help you clear harder content? And at the end of the day, the answer I would say is no. Um, having Santa E1, E0 is not going to help you clear harder content because Nordak um, will give you a way bigger boost on survivability than Santa, Santa will be able to do. Um, the the reliability from the freeze, you, you need way too much effect hit for you to land that 100% um, of the time and you're not going to achieve the results that you want from that particular freeze earlier on in the game. So I would say if you're early on, you know, and if you, unless you don't plan to get a Nordak, by the way, and I can say that, you know, I actually um, converted my Nordak to something else on my other account early, early on, just because the fact that I was, you know, I was about to get a Santa E0. So if you want to save yourself from a mythic, hey, getting Santa might be worth it. But if you already have a Nordak and you have a Catherine, uh, and, you know, especially if you have, like, a Mamouk or, you know, French where you have, or even a Hal, something that helps you do the damage reduction, getting a little Jack will help you push your dungeon content a lot further. That's just my two cents. Now, of course, if you're starting out and you don't have a Nordak and, and you don't plan to get a Nordak anytime soon, you want to pick different mythics for starting out, then I highly recommend you get get your Santa, because Santa plus Catherine is a really great from a defensive perspective, and it will help you, you know, maybe push a stage or two higher than what you were pushing before. Okay, Paulin, Paulin doesn't have much application in PvE at all. Um, don't expect to get a Paulin 
uh, and hey, all of a sudden you're pushing more PvE content. Yes, it will definitely help you in Advanced Arena, in Guild Arena, um, even allowing you to push a little bit further on your Classic if you happen to be um, in a bracket where you see a lot of Nazils or or Ascendos, a lot of control base opponents, uh, opponent having even a E0 um, Paul in will help you counter a lot of those teams. So see where you're at. If you're if you're not happy with your PvP progress, definitely get Paul in. If you want PvE progress, um, Santa or or Lil Jack is your first pick. Um, to kind of sum it up, in terms of what are the most critical uh, exclusive you want to aim for. Um, I know a lot of people say, hey, Little Jack, well, let's go through one, each one of them one at a time. Little Jack, um, people people say that, you know, um, you, you want E2 or Bust. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, the average player is probably going to be looking at, you know, 150% um, mastery, which translates to... 60% additional mastery on a hero. 60% extra max mastery is not 60% extra damage. It's maybe realistically about 30% more damage output. So if you're done, it's, it's not, yes, it will help you perhaps do a little bit more DPS, help you clear that wave that you weren't able to clear before with one single AOE. In the grand scheme of things, you know, you add, you add 30% DPS to to you know your your Nita to your to your has is great right like here I'm running a E2 Jack but what really is the deal breaker here is the actual the 40% additional damage reduction so I would actually say E1 Jack is probably the one exclusive that helps you push to a new ceiling in PVE um, PVE the most okay and then the next one is probably Santa E3 because that one additional apple all of a sudden give you way more margin of error. Uh, and then the 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 perma free setup. So the perma free setup allow you to run um, compositions in PVE, especially in Elemental City where you can then really take out another hero um, to rely to deal with the waves a lot easier but again I feel like these exclusive are nice to have as opposed to a necessity exclusive three on Santa is very different because it actually helps you um, survive that sometimes that key uh, wave mistake because you just simply can't, can't get through the wave without sometimes taking taking one one death um, and it'll help you push that one extra floor or one extra level that you're not able to. So I would say, you know, the most impactful exclusive in PVE will be, you know, will be Jack E1, Santa E3, then maybe Santa E2, and then, you know, Paulin, you're really only picking him because there's certain content you want to push in, you, you want to progress on your PVP side. So hopefully this is helpful in your decision making. Again, um, if you have any questions, please feel to stop, uh, stop by our Discord and, you know, uh, we're all there to help you guys out.